This video shows how to make quick sketches that serve as visual records for reference to facilitate visual thinking and understanding and used to develop visual ideas. It illustrates methods for keeping visual notebooks. Who should take visual notes? Artists, engineers, scientists, architects, designers, students, and travelers are all groups of people who would benefit by visual note taking. Keeping visual notes can sharpen the observer's capacity for seeing and learning. Visual learning isn't taught in school, but it's just as important, if not more, than verbal learning. Visual note-taking helps expand your knowledge beyond just observation and verbal analysis. Taking visual notes is both useful and easy. Often we are reluctant to draw anything because we want everything to be beautiful, or we don't think we have the talent to draw well. Visual notes are simply the graphic equivalent to taking written notes. Anyone can take visual notes just by jumping in and taking some of the cues from this video. You don't need to be an artist or have drawing skills to communicate information. Visual notes create visual literacy as a foundation for all architects and visual designers. Sketching and visual note-taking was an important part of architectural education, but now with photography, digital cameras, iPhones, computer models, and other technologies, visual note-taking has declined. Because students are taught to jump straight onto the computer, this visual literacy is being lost. People cannot think anymore. Digital mediums cannot record concepts underlying structures, or anything that the eye cannot see directly. These technologies cannot analyze concepts or assign values to ideas. As Le Corbusier said, the camera gets in the way of seeing. In school, students are taught verbal literacy and mathematical literacy, but this completely ignores visual literacy. Visual literacy is the ability to take visual and graphical notes. This is seldom taught in high school or even in college. Visual notes come from very practical circumstances such as student note-taking or extracting essential elements from a book. Once it becomes as easy to record visual thoughts as verbal ones, a new world is opened. Basic drawing skills arise out of the visual note-taking process. Seeing, thinking, and designing. Designers use some form of a research, analysis, and problem-solving process. This is a three-step process of seeing, thinking, and designing. Research. Seeing, perceiving, and observing are the key research techniques of note-taking. In this research phase, we observe, record, gather requirements, contexts, forms, forces, relationships, and structures. Here, I'm studying the form of the letter S. I look at many different letter S's as research. In the analysis phase, one does formal analysis, or the analysis of form. For the letter S, I discover that the shape of the letters are created by controlling lines, shapes, and grids. Controlling or construction lines. Lines can be used to control the shape of the letter S. These are usually called construction lines. They can set up axes, proportions, and symmetries. Measurement lines. Measurement lines can also be used. Here the measurements can be analyzed and perhaps the dimensions can be modified. Grids. Grids too can be used as controlling lines to structure the S shape. Shapes and geometries. Shapes can also be controlling geometries. For the letter S, circles can be used to control the shape to structure the S. These shapes can be modified to change the shape of the S. Here I realize the letter S is created from several circles, and I draw the circles to understand how this structures the S. The top circle is slightly larger than the bottom circle. I learn this by using the measurement lines. Gesture and movement. Gesture uses free movement of lines to simulate the movement of a body or a gesture. 
Instead of the mechanical use of grids or static shapes, the line takes on a dynamic shape that relates to human or physical movement. Problem solving. In the problem solving phase, one uses concepts, uh, construction, expression, and communication to propose solutions. Sometimes this is called problem seeking or opportunity seeking. There is discovery and experimentation. Problem solving may be a misnomer as it's really playing and discovering happy accidents. This is the heart of creativity. Morphology. Morphology of forms takes an existing form and modifies it using various techniques. One could modify the controlling lines, change the dimensions of the measurement lines, warp the grid, change the shapes, or modify the gesture. Here I want to express and communicate a more dynamic S. I take the circles, which are static forms, and replace them with ovals, which are much more dynamic. I draw inspiration from the gesture drawing and use it to combine ideas and forms. There are three levels of visual messaging. Representation, abstraction, and symbols. Representation records what we see. Abstraction maps what we see to what we think. This distills meaning from visual phenomena. Perception is the filtering of what we see through the lens of what we think. This creates order and meaning. Symbolism is a graphic expression of an idea. What it communicates is the relationship between symbols and ideas. Representation, recording visual phenomena. This is a sketch of Frank Furness's Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. Unfortunately, I drew it fairly small in my sketchbook, and it was too small to do an in-depth analysis. Furness created very complex architecture in the Victorian period. Let's use this sketch to explore the language of representation through the magic of tracing paper. Here I'm using abstract representation to analyze form. Contour lines. Contour is the outline or outermost edge of a plane that defines the shape or form. A contour line can be continuous or broken, expressive of the form, or simply show the object's edge. Shapes. A shape is the plane of a surface, figure, or object. Shapes can be representational of what the eye sees or abstract geometries like circles, squares, and triangles. Masses. Masses are three-dimensional forms comprising several planes. Masses help us to visualize an object three-dimensionally, not just flat planes. Value. Color or chiaroscuro. Value, or the Beaux-Arts word color, means the distribution of light and shadow across the surface of a form. Color or chiaroscuro more specifically means the design of light and shadow. This concept was very important in architecture up until modernism when it was abandoned. Controlling lines. Controlling lines are sometimes called measurement lines. These can be lines, grids, or axes. They're useful in measuring the object or form. Texture. Texture is the surface characteristics of an object. This can be smooth to rough. It is often a three-dimensional pattern of an object. Abstraction, diagramming. Diagrams are often more analytical than representational. They require more thought and less skill. Visual notes are not just analytical. We use them to organize our thoughts. Types of diagrams, plan. A plan is a cut through a building looking from above. This is a bird's eye view, or perhaps a god's eye view. A site plan is just looking at the place from above. Section. A section is a cut through a building or object looking from the side. Elevation. Elevations are analytical ways of looking at objects. We generally break this down into a front view, side view, and back view. When architects create elevations, they use north, east, west, and south to denote uh, different sides of a building. Perspective. 
Perspective drawings show an object as a three-dimensional projection as the eye sees it from a particular point of view. Exploded view. An exploded view takes an orthogonal projection drawing and takes it apart, showing all the pieces and parts to the object. Types of symbols. Symbols are representations of abstract ideas. Usually, these are socially constructed like language. There are lots of pre-made symbols in society. I suggest making your own as they help you think and distill an idea into a minimalist form. Architects use program diagrams or adjacency diagrams to work out relationships of spaces in a building. This shows the functional parts and adjacencies to each part. Almost all ideas can be communicated visually through symbols. Often science displays complex data visually through the use of charts and graphs. The possibilities are endless. Here I created symbols for traditional, modern, postmodern, and interobjective architecture. They show how each phase of architecture is based on an underlying theory. These symbols communicate an abstract idea that I could not have communicated with a photograph, for example. Design and storytelling. Storyboards and thumbnails. Storyboards are sequential art. This tells a story over time and space. Storyboards are used primarily in movies to block out the action in stories, but they are also useful in the design of interactive environments such as websites or even architecture, showing how people move through and interact with a building or place. Storyboards can be used to describe a sequence of spaces and how one moves through them. Here are some thumbnail sketches I did to visualize more complex illustrations. I do thumbnails on little flashcards as quick sketches when I have an idea, but I don't want to take the time to do a sketch in my sketchbook. If it's a good idea, then I'll paste them into my sketchbook later. Often when I'm designing something, I do a quick thumbnail sketch before taking the time to do a more elaborate drawing. When creating YouTube videos, I often use thumbnail storyboards to block out the images I'll be using. Thinking sequentially about how one will experience an image is very important to learn. This is an absolute necessary skill for filmmakers. The power of keeping a sketchbook over the years is that they don't just document one's ideas, life and events, but the internal world of one's mind. It becomes clear who you are by what interests you over time. There arises a story within a story as one's notebooks progress over time. The outward story of what you look at and what you think about, but then there's also an inward story of your thoughts, feelings, and desires. In my sketchbooks, apart from specific illustrations and architecture, I usually study natural phenomena for essences. Phenomena is what we see, but essences make up the underlying structure of its form. Through careful observation and drawing, we can get back to the intrinsic qualities of space. Drawing in this context is trying to discover the natural essences of a place or thing. This is a sketch of the Marin Veterans Memorial Theater by Frank Lloyd Wright. It's not a beautiful sketch, but one where I was trying to figure out what Frank Lloyd Wright was trying to do. This is such a bizarre building and it didn't make much sense to me at first. This building is part of the Marin Civic Center, designed by Wright in 1960. In drawing the building, I realized that Wright was actually mimicking nature in the forms of the building. The curved roof mimicked the Marin mountain range, and the hills the Civic Center sat on. The horizontal base represented the natural form of the ground plane, or the water of San Francisco Bay, that the Marin Mountains sit on. Lastly, Wright also included vertical elements that mimic the redwood trees of Marin. So when Wright says he learns from nature, he's actually mimicking many of the natural forms. To represent what Wright tried to do, I drew this diagram. In architecture, this is called a partie diagram and shows in one simple sketch the main form of a building. This is what pulled it all together for me. But then I realized that Renzo Piano's Academy of Sciences in San Francisco is a direct copy of Wright's idea. Here's the partie diagram I drew of Piano's building. He takes the same concepts Wright used 
and applied it to the California Academy of Sciences building. He creates a curved roof to mimic the hills of San Francisco, just like Wright did to mimic the mountains of Marin. He uses a plinth like Wright to represent a ground plane. There are no redwood trees in San Francisco, so unlike Wright, there are no vertical elements. Clearly, the two buildings are using the same mimicking of the hills and mountains to derive the roof form. It's only through drawing over and over again one's visual knowledge increases so you can make discoveries like this. I hope this video encouraged you to take visual notes and to develop a habit of visual note taking. This should be the first and most basic tool in any designer's tool chest. I'm Jamie Roberts. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe.